Well, hello, guys. Hey, I was on another podcast, the Alien Attic Podcast. Yeah, we talked short season, um, megaliths, all kinds of things. Pretty fun stuff. They were kind enough to share with me, so I'm going to share with you guys. Hey, and if you guys like these podcasts and you're listening on the audio only, please give me a five-star review in either Apple or Spotify. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. It really helps me out. Anyways, guys, enjoy. Love y'all. Hello, welcome to Alien Addict, your daily conspiracy news podcast. We don't take days off because the reptilians don't take days off. And I am joined today by not only my co-hosts, Ollie and Dave, but also from TikTok, Instagram, and all-round internet sleuthing fame, JT Follows JC. I am so excited to have you on the show today, mate. Well, appreciate you having me on. I'm excited too. And um, YouTube as well. That's what I've been watching you on. <laughs> yeah, that's my um, that's been my baby over the last year. I've I've put most of my effort into that because apps apps like um, TikTok or TikTok especially. I've been banned there one time already, and um, you know, I've been warned on other apps. So I'm I've been really like you know I, I'm I'm more focused on like we over the last year I focused more on long term long form content, even like I said, documentary movies. I want to do. I like the reels for, you know, to get people like a taste of it, but I want to bring them in for, for the whole meal. Mm -hmm. uh, so how did you get started doing this stuff? Because I've, I found your stuff because since like the, the explosion of the whole Tartaria stuff and old world mm -hmm. things, um, I, I, that's, I think one thing that reels and stuff on TikTok seems to be perfect for is it like the the Tartaria thing? I think exploded because of that. Mm -hmm. Because you know, you all of a sudden you start what, uh, looking at videos of the World's Fair, and then one thing leads to another. And you're like, oh, hang on a second, I know <laughs> nothing about where I come from, or like, but probably even what the actual year is now. So, like, how how did you get into this? Well, I like a lot of people. Twenty twenty happened, and. All of a sudden, we were like, I don't think I can trust what I've been taught. You know, I mean, you know, obviously there was cracks before then. I, I was even saying it's funny because I like that show Ancient Aliens back in the day. And this is before I was really conspiratorial at all. But I just thought, oh, that's interesting. You know, and being a Christian guy, I've already been kind of skeptical of what I'm taught, like certain kinds of histories, like the Big Bang and, you know, evolution. Because I was ripe to, you know, to question things anyways. And then I was presented with the stuff about the megaliths. And I was like, wait a minute. They really are trying to say that that people pulled those blocks with ropes and stuff across the sand and like lift them up how and they cut them with they cut them with tools that are softer than the rocks they're cutting. I was like, wait a minute. I don't. So like I automatically start to question those kind of things. And then fast forward to 2020. I lived on Twitter that year. And I was just watching stuff and I was just like, man, they're lying. Nobody even cares what's true anymore. I was like, this is so frustrating. And then through the pandemic and all the stuff that happened during that time, I just, I had like personal crisis. Um, I woke up in my faith and I really started to read my Bible again. And, and I felt called to like start making videos. Like I, it was, they started off being just kind of, was kind of little testimonials. Like, Hey, I've lived about 40 something years. Here's the lessons I've learned. And I was kind of like, pushing out the stuff from like the mainstream stuff, the stuff that I used to listen to. So I was reading my Bible and then I was going down the rabbit hole, like on of all the conspiracies after I started to question things on YouTube. And before you know it, it was like the, the confluence of all those things. My brother sends me uh, a, a TikTok video. And he says, you need to get on this app. And I was like, TikTok, like why would that's for 13 year old girls doing dances and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but then I watched the video and it was like, this is about the Illuminati. Oh, this is, they got this on here. What else have they got on here? And so you start watching all the conspiratorial videos and you're like, this is pretty awesome. And 
before you know it, I'm like, there was a statue over at the UN. I think it's about two years ago, maybe three years ago now. And it looked like a, the beast, like a beast straight out of the book of Daniel. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, had like a lion's face or something. It had like tiger's paws, leopard spots and wings and exactly like out of Daniel seven or something or the book of revelation. So I remember thinking, man, I need to show people this thing. And then I need to show them the scriptures. So they'll know that like, this is something more than just being odd. There's, there's something about this. And of course I had an end times mindset then. And so when I, I just like, I didn't know how to do it other than I just like, I showed the, Thing on my computer and i like showed the, the scriptures and i kind of just made like a surprise face and i went from like three followers to about a thousand after that video and then i then my brother was like oh you can make a series of these and so i made a few more i made one about the mark of the beast and it got a million views and before you know it i had you know twenty thousand followers and then i within like six months i had a hundred thousand and then i had you know like the next year i had two hundred thousand and then so then I was getting banned. So like I started to go around all the di different platforms and I think Instagram was really kind of focusing Instagram and Facebook were kind of a little bit late to the game and they were moving toward the reels and everything. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, all through that is like, people are saying, Hey, you should do a podcast. And I started doing a podcast. I started using, putting my live streams on YouTube and before you know it, I'm like, I'm kind of going from like one conspiracy theory to the next one because for one, when you start doing this, you just, there's a rush of like, oh, wow, I wonder if I find out something new and crazy, I'll tell everybody about it. And for one, obviously, I like to look into these things anyways. And then, yeah, you kind of go from here to here. And it's like, you know, talk about everything being connected and then learning what it all means. And yeah, but obviously, T Tataria, the old world, that's that's a more recent one. But yeah, that's one that's definitely world changing if you know if you accept if you can accept it mm. did, did you find a pattern to the ones that were getting you banned and think these are the ones that are re they really don't want you to put out there well yeah i mean it's funny like i you know i think it's funny because a, a lot of people's first real big conspiracy theory is 9 11 and so i i guess that was one of those ones where like i didn't ever want to believe that was true obviously being an american guy and like thinking like that was a kind of galvanizing point for us for at one point. And then after 20 years of wars and stuff, and you're like, wait a minute, this is, this, there is something to this. And then of course, after, after 2020, you revisit that and you're like, good grief. This is like really obvious. Like the, the things that people are saying, mm -hmm. I mean, I, the only reason I didn't believe these things before is because I never looked. And now that I looked and, and so when I was tying like nine 11 stuff to biblical prophecy and just like, that kind of stuff and just and kind of just just exposing it just naked to everybody like yeah those videos would get you in trouble the funny part is it, they don't get certain people in trouble i don't know why they got me in particular in trouble but it was i don't know if it's like i wonder sometimes and it could be maybe you know everybody having this persecution complex but like i believe as a christian guy i might be dangerous to these kind of people because it's like that i maybe not I might say some crazy stuff, but I mean, the most things I say are pretty, pretty measured. So when I do say something like that, there people are likely to believe me. And so that I'm the kind of guy they really don't want, you know, they, if you dump out every conspiracy, you have accounts like that that say the craziest crap, but they say the craziest crap all the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what's allowed to be said, but, but yeah, nine 11 stuff about Israel. Um, that's the stuff I usually talk about on rumble. Um, Weather manipulation, which obviously is a hot button, <laughs> hot button topic right now. Right now, like, I, it's funny because I was talking to a friend about that, and I think we're going to do a podcast over Rumble. But I was like, I have a, I have a video that I knew like like two years ago that if I made this video, it would get me banned mm -hmm. because I, because there is so much there. But yeah, I mean, obviously, this the stuff that's true is the stuff that's going to get you in trouble. It's not the stuff that's not true. Yeah. Uh it's interesting that you bring up the Tartaria. So we, our followers, people who follow us. We ourselves haven't dove into Tartaria, at least on a podcast mm -hmm. in depth. Uh, Lee is our resident hound and he sways me 50% of the time, sometimes one way, sometimes the other. Uh, Ollie, I don't know where he's at. Ollie's still on flat earth. You're there. 
Yeah, uh, that's a yes. That that weird head shake that people listening to. The yes. <laughs> so is he on that? Is he nine. on that? Like, that the, the certain steps, like yes. you know, like where he's like somewhere in the middle. I'm on the like, curve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should yeah, see the true. you should see the T-shirt he made. Uh, it's fantastic. But uh, would you explain to our audiences listening now Tartaria in a nutshell, so we can dive into that and then carry to the mud flood? I'm not a flat earther, but I like that. Um, so yeah, so Tartaria, for one thing, it's like there's an empire that was the Tartarian Air Empire, whatever, the Tartars. That that's interesting. It's like so that's really not a I don't know if would you could call that a conspiracy theory, but like in Asia, kind of like mm-hmm. where Russia is, there was this empire and they were called t- the Tartarians. And and it's weird. And it's like you said, you go look on old maps and it's there. Mm-hmm. Now so what people have done is they've taken this empire and they said, this is a worldwide empire. And the evidence of it is these, these certain types of architecture, these buildings that are kind of all over. They're kind of like Greco Roman looking style, big columns, domes, antennas, weird things, maybe even the, the cathedrals. Mm-hmm. Now, see, I think that Tatari was a name for something that was very hard for people to explain. And I think I like the, I like the word or the the phrase old world because it's like, we really don't know much more about it than that. It's just like, there's this certain style and it's kind of like going back to the ancient, ancient aliens thing. Like that show does a good job of saying, isn't it strange that all these certain places all disconnected across the world or supposedly disconnected built these same very similar structures, like these pyramids, there's pyramids everywhere. Mm-hmm. It, it speaks to most people as, there must have been some kind of connectivity that they were doing the same things. It, it makes more sense that there was a kind of some kind of worldwide civilization here that we are not taught about or we're not told about. We don't we don't have any memory of, but it it makes sense. So in the same way, there is buildings all around the world, you know, places where they don't really belong. I think you see like the um, that old world style, and I think yeah, you think like a good example in the United States would be like Washington D.C. And I'm sure like, obviously you guys being in the UK, you know, there's tons of that stuff in London. I think Paris is probably one of the best examples of it. Like Paris has the old world stuff everywhere. I mean, it's all, it's all over Europe. It's, it's actually all over everywhere. You know, some places have little pockets of it, but if you go into old cities, when they say buildings were either built in the late 1800s, you know, it's like between like the 1400s and the 1800s or 1900s, like there's this style and there are stone buildings they're incredible. They got gigantic doors. They have yeah you know, columns that are just like 30 feet tall, six feet around. You know, it's, it's very bizarre. And then, yeah, they have these domes. They kind of like think like a, the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Those are everywhere. They're in every state in the United States, almost in, almost in every big city as well. And when they start to explain how these things were done or the, or the timeline, some of these buildings they say were when, when they were built, it starts to, you know, it leads to more questions. Like, really? They did that then? And then, of course, you think, like, they didn't invent power tools into the 1890s. Um, so how did they do this stuff? They did this with horse and cart and chiseled all this stuff by hand. They went through, from the quarry and all that stuff. Point being is there's lots of questions about that. And it was like, this is a conspiracy that's kind of like the the almost the very definition of hidden in plain sight. Mm-hmm. Like, you walk by these buildings every day if you live in a big city you don't think much of it other than thinking like that's pretty cool those buildings are kind of awesome isn't it kind of weird how they built uh washington dc like ancient rome that's weird but you know you but that's about it that's all you really say oh they say oh they they just thomas jefferson liked that style so they just decided to go with it and everyone's like okay good enough for me until you start to actually really start to try to understand it and, and I think that's what, you know, so there's, there's a belief now that, that that could be a lie or that that is a lie. Like what we've been taught about how these cities were built or founded, you know, that's an, a, a key, key word, is being, being called into question. And so if, if, it, if this history is a lie about some of these things, what does that mean? Well, people then take the step to say, maybe this was the connected society like that these are evidence that there was a time that was possibly superior to the time we're living in now 
where they had certain kinds of technology and knowledge of things. And here's the evidence of it. It's these buildings, just like just I'm in the same way you could say they had some technology back when they built pyramids because otherwise they could not have done that without technology mm -hmm. in the same way. If we're taught about like the progression of man's like capabilities of doing things, well, how is the architecture superior 200 years ago than it is now? If we've been taught the same thing. So yeah, so people are trying to say that maybe Tataria, like I said, again, that's, that's a word for something we can't hardly explain. Maybe that was an empire that once ruled the whole world and the evidence is the buildings. Mm. It it feels to me the like the old world conspiracy theory is when you when you look into conspiracy theories most of the time you've got to kind of park your common sense a little bit just to get into it to see if there's any anything there whereas Tartaria seems to be accepting your common sense to see that there is something there you know when you see mm -hmm. old pictures of like you say Washington D.C. or uh, something like that and there's like three people in the photograph <laughs> and these bleach white skies, which like have clearly been altered for, for some reason. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just, it, 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 I, I, for me anyway, the, the old world stuff is, is without doubt that there's, there is something to it. Um, I liked the video. I, I was watching a video you did the other day where you were talking about the, um, the uh, little season, mm -hmm. which uh, if I, uh, so if, if I'm right, you're, you're thinking that the, the old world was technically a golden age, which has been and gone. Yeah. Well, I mean, so the Christian theory behind it was again, I like, this is a, obviously a world shifting moment for me is that I believe that like the pandemic and all the stuff that was happening was leading toward the return of Jesus in our lifetimes. So a lot of people were thinking like, oh, that Mark of the Beast is coming next is like they're not going to be able to buy or sell. There's going to they're going to try to rebuild the temple in Israel. And then we're going to have an Antichrist going there. But then as as a lot of people have started to say, it's like, but what some, I remember he, first hearing the first time I heard that, because I I had heard of the, the Sataria theory, but it really didn't. Again, I was more focused on different things because I really didn't know how it fit into my to, you know, to, like, what do you do with that? Mm. and then and then somebody said hey what if that was evidence of the millennial kingdom like you know that's talked about after jesus comes back what mm. if that was evidence of it and i remember like it kind of stopped me like huh that's a pretty interesting idea i mean i wasn't sold on it but i was like okay that actually is pretty intriguing but i didn't think i want to accept it until recently and then then i go back and revisit the scriptures and like i said this would take a long time to explain all this but more or less, when you read the Bible, especially the New Testament, for when it was written to who it was written to, Jesus is talking to the people he's talking to. The letters are written to the people they're written to. <laughs> it's almost like should go without saying. But we have read that 2,000 years into, you know, they we've read ourselves into the story when Jesus is telling his disciples that they're going to see him come back. So when you read the letters from the apostles, they they all they all talk about the return of Jesus as imminent. And so a lot of the the real powerful end time scriptures come from Matthew 24, Luke 21 and Matthew uh, Mark 13 and it's and it actually he's talking about when you actually specifically read what he's talking about he's talking about the destruction of temp, the temple and he's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. And so he's saying that when you start to see all these things happen that's when the son of man is going to come on the clouds. And so he says you know, truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away till all these things take place. And then I learned about like 70 AD, the, the Jewish Roman War, where Jerusalem was destroyed. I didn't know about that before I started to do all this, the research and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, actually, historians like Josephus and Tacitus actually wrote that there were soldiers in the clouds when this was this stuff was taking place. Yeah. I mean, right. like in like this, you know, Roman historians wrote stuff that that obviously would make your, you know, make your hair stand up when they were talking about things that were supernatural. And these guys aren't, these guys are like respected, like Tacitus is probably the most respected Roman historian. And he talked about all the same things Josephus did in the, Ro the Roman Jewish war. And so that being said, if those things took place back then, if you do read the Bible in that kind of way, what would be the evidence of that? And I was like, well, 
maybe maybe it could be this. Maybe it could be this because it mentions in the in Revelation chapter twenty that after these things happen, the devil is bound and he's put in a pit for a thousand years, and then it's like it's it's kind of a time of peace and prosperity. At least that we, a lot of people have implied that. It also mentions that Jesus rules with a rod of iron, so it might not be as quite as you know like as merry as everybody thinks it might be. So it might be a little bit rough around the edges. But I was thinking if you go deeper into like the Tataria stuff people start to point out like the antiquitech and there's like, there's a lot of good reason to believe these people had free energy. Like mm -hmm. you even think about like the domes and the antennas and stuff like that. A lot of people believe they had the ability to harness like electromagnetism through from the ether and they could possibly use water and different means in order to harness free energy. It kind of makes sense. It make it makes sense to a lot of us. And if, and if that was the case, well, well I, I, anyways, point is like there's you could go kind of deep into this and keep continue to look, but there's a lot of evidence there was technology from before, and but we're not taught about that. So what would that mean? Well, it mentions after the thousand years is over, the devil's allowed out of his prison, and he's he's given a little season, a short season, to deceive the nations, and then he gathers them together, and there's another final battle, almost kind of almost similar to before. Jesus comes back, or when Jesus comes mm -hmm. back, there's Armageddon. But after is there's a battle like Gog Magog battle, where again it's it's very similar in the same same kind of way. But yeah, so I think that to me, like as a Christian, now I have a framework where like, okay, this actually makes sense. You know, we're all taught that all these things are going to be in a future event. But if you're a if a Christian, you're looking forward to this glorious time. What do you do with a glorious time that was from before here? Mm. Maybe, maybe we're on the wrong part of the timeline than we think. <laughs> I heard you mention uh, on one of the one of the podcasts I was actually listening to today that, and, and it's something we we definitely think that the uh, the higher ups definitely believe in an evil uh, that mm. they, they seem to worship a a devil. Mm. Um, and I heard you say something along the lines of um, the reason why they possibly worship this. Is because that's the only thing left to worship. What did you mean by that? Oh well, a friend of mine brought this up, and I looked this up. There was a a very famous kind of um, he was a a guy who was came out of the Illuminati. His, his name was Doc Marquis, and and he got saved out of that, and he became a Christian, and he started to expose a lot of this stuff. And he's and he, this is what he said. He said that the people and like the higher ups and like the kind of these secret societies they worship Lucifer because their belief was, yeah, that a lot of these things already did happen. And he's the only God who's left here. And I was like, that is kind of, that's, it's almost crazy. Like a Fox. It's like, okay, so we're going to worship the God who's here because Jesus already did his thing mm -hmm. and he's in heaven now, but the God who's here, you can get the things from the world from this God. And it kind of makes, I mean, it makes sense when you see like the, you know, all these musicians and people in high high places who who talk about they sold their souls. Good example that's like Bob Dylan when he's like doing that. That's a that's one of the creepiest interviews when he's talking about like what does he get asked? Why are you still doing this? Well, I made a deal. And he's like with who? And he's just like what the commander of this world. And he's like mm -hmm. the big chief or I can't even remember how he explains it. But yeah, I mean obviously it's. It doesn't take a lot to say that he was talking about the devil and it, it makes sense. I mean, I, I think it makes sense. I, I always, I've tried to always tell people this um, when I make videos and I, and I usually try to make sure that I don't tell people stuff that I know that I don't, I couldn't know for sure. So I always want people to think for themselves, but I always tell them as like, you don't have to believe in the devil, but I can make a pretty good case that these people do. You know, so if these people who are the people running this place, if I can kind of show you lots of signs that they are serving some some kind of a, a coordinated evil, well, then what do you do with that? Well, it's the the, the way I look at it is I think Ollie's Ollie's quite the same. Um, Dave is um, much more like versed in Christianity than either either of us are. Um, but and I live most of my life as an atheist. And through doing this stuff and through doing more more and more conspiracies, I've I I one hundred percent believe that 
there is a sect of Satanists that are were well, in power uh, on Earth. And for me, the best thing to do at that point was go, well, okay, then. Well, clearly, clearly you don't know everything. So now it's it's kind of time to pick a team. And so I didn't I didn't I didn't find God. I found Satan and that made me believe in God. And, and speaking of that, here's Bob Dylan real quick. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. You know, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago and I'm holding up my end. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Should, should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and this earth and in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Why do you... <laughs> I mean, like, that is creepy. I mean, I, I mean, so, like, why would anyone lie about that? Hmm. Allegedly, one of the fallen name, one of the original two hundred of the fallen, one of the names of them was Destiny. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. I, oh, so they have you, names. Well, I've, um, I've obviously I've read in the book of Enoch, and I'm you mm-hmm. know obviously it doesn't mention all two hundred. It, it mentions mm-hmm. specific ones, but yeah, I mean I believe it. It's um, yeah. So so when you see that kind of stuff, that it's it's one thing if some crazy per, some bum on the street says. Oh yeah, I worship the devil, and you're like, "Well, how's it working out for you?" <laughs> you know, versus Bob Dylan. You know, like he's obviously achieved, and then yeah, then you kind of see like the elites and their connections with these other wicked people, and you're like, "Why would they have any association?" Like, was it Maria Abramovich? Hmm. You know, like she's like literally hanging out with, she's rubbing shoulders with all these these celebrities, the yeah. Rothschilds, and then she's like. What I think Zelensky from Ukraine was going to hire her to be do something with art and children. She was like, the oh. ambassador. Yeah. She was the ambassador for a while to the UN for the Ukraine, and then right. she was the international diplomat for children rights. Right. So what? That's the that's the last person you'd want. I mean, that's the last person I'd have near my there, children. There, mm-hmm. There's a couple of those big known witches that out there float around, and it's just amazing to see the circles they travel. And when you look at her. You look at her like, wow, look at that lady. And then you realize she's in her late 70s to early 80s. Mm. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll continue away. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll she work looks my magic. in her late 40s. Yeah. Yeah. She looks like she's in her late 40s. Yeah. No, I'm, yeah. That surprised me that she's that old. I wonder what she does to, to stay so youthful. I think we could guess. It's kind of, you know, <laughs> it, it, you, you kind of think about it like in those, those movies like uh, Snow White, you know, like these the witches how they stay young and it usually involves stealing it from the beauty from a young woman a young damsel yeah yeah it's it the it, it it's wild the possibilities of what might go on that we don't know um and it's it's just strange it's strange how like you say these celebrities and musicians and stuff flock to these people i, I can't remember the other one that it's the the other woman, which has got like the jaws, has black painted fingernails. Dave, you remember her name, don't you? <sighs> I'm, I'm I'm on this thing. You can't pump like me for you can't pump me for two uh, elite uh, <laughs> Illuminati <laughs> witches at once, man. I can only, you know, I gotta I gotta keep my soul intact as I have to deal with this one incarnation at a time. You have to uh, give me more than black fingernails. I might be able to. Think of yeah, well, well, while, he's, while he's thinking of that, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I could just name all of them. <laughs> they've all, they've all bl- painted their fingernails black. She's with all the she's with all the rappers. Um, she's an artist as well. But they all like you see her a lot with Jay Z and Beyonce as you do Maria Abramovic. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, you I, see I, her. She, mm-hmm. uh, Maria Abramovic is allegedly a student of hers. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Does she have like some famous are... husband too? Yes. And her, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, clothing designer or something like he's, yeah, he's exactly. unbelievably, and he's younger and unbelievably creepy. Mm. Yeah. He's the guy that's not allowed within 500 yards of a school. You um, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of them stem back to Crowley. Oh, yeah. 100%. So she is 77. Wow. Yeah. that w- I would not have guessed that. Well, so it's funny, like, obviously, this seems like a quite a departure from what we were talking about. But so welcome to Alien. It, it, yeah, well, no, no, but I mean, I think it's but it's funny, like you would say, well, how does this 
connect at all. And you're saying like, okay, so when we discuss discuss conspiracies, obviously there's a conspiracy to hide this information. So why would they hide it? Like, why would anyone be, how would they be capable of, of doing it? And so again, if you're talking, we're talking about like a lot of conspiracies, people do say like, well, how could, how can men pull that stuff off? And I was like, what if it wasn't just men? Like, yeah. what if there was, what if there is coordinated evil that's controlling the pulling the, you know, do, puppeteering all this stuff? Because the, the main thing behind that is, is it's the only thing that truly explains the timeline. Because the timeline, if, if, if this is an overarching conspiracy um, to essentially sub, subjugate like humanity, it's done on such a timeline, which is just generations. You know, it's, mm-hmm. and, and we, we as humans, we're not very good at being patient. And, you know, it's at very least we want things to happen within our lifetime. Have you guys ever seen the movie Revolver, the Guy Ritchie movie Revolver? I have yeah. seen that. It's been a while, though. Yeah, so they go through the art of the con, right? And, and it's a great movie. You know, I, I enjoy it. There's two different versions. There's a European version and an American version, which I think is very strange. But they're, they're both very good to watch. I, I think so. And I'm one of these people that believe that truth is hidden in culture because that's part of the ritual, right? It's exposing mm-hmm. itself and whatever effects that these things believe in and however they work their process. And one of the things in there is people don't believe in a con because they believe it's too big or it's too old to be true. It's too big that there's no way you could pull it off or it's too old that no one could have gotten along with, gotten away with it for so long and not been caught. Because if they question that, then they have to question that they have been fooled. Mm -hmm. That means they have to question themselves and their own intelligence. And very few people can do that. And the, in, in the industry, which we were talking about was Michelle Lammy which is interesting when you look into Lamb and, you know, Crowley. Yeah. But uh, there she is. She's she's also 70, 78. So. Mm. Yeah, so I know I think that I think that it does I mean, so obviously yeah, you've coordinated evil, why would they hide these things? And yeah, exactly. I think that if you think about it, I'm sure like like most of us, I mean, well, you guys are probably 30s, I would guess, 30s, 40s like mm-hmm. myself. Yeah, we could stay in 30s. I like that. Yeah, I'll stay. <laughs> well, I mean, point being is like that. Boys, w- nobody wants to believe the things we're saying when you're re- when you're really young because you got your whole life in front of you and you're like you want to think the best of everything. Yeah. But of course, at, at some point, as most of us do, become a, we become a little cynical, and we're we're wondering why everything is so jacked up. Mm-hmm. And so, so now, like, you're willing to accept it, but then you really think about it, it's like. Yeah, we're like kind of, you know, you get to be like my age. It's like, at best, I'm probably in the middle, like the, you know, somewhere in the middle on the getting toward the, the tail end. So once you, when you're finally willing to accept this, the, the younger people don't want to hear it. You know, I try to tell my kids about some of this stuff. So yeah, like the, that if you have beings that are not as concerned about time as we are, yeah, they can wait out things. And I think the elites, I think this is like this idea of like that they work in, in like centuries like planning mm. out like hundreds of years and so i think it's it's my belief that yeah if this if this stuff is true some people have knowledge of it and again like we were talking about like these secret societies that they worship the god that's here then they would probably have knowledge of it but again not everybody in those societies would only people toward the top and so you know you think about like the vatican vaults and secret libraries I think they say I, I've I've seen two different numbers, but there's like over 50 miles of bookshelves in the mm-hmm. Vatican libraries. So you could imagine what kind of knowledge is in there, and then in the secret societies, what they don't have. And it's it's I I think it's kind of funny, and it's almost like kind of in your face. So we're told the Freemasons were responsible for a lot of these these grand structures. So if you go into Washington D.C., they have the Scottish Rite Freemasonry building. It looks exactly like the rest of the washington dc architecture but have you ever seen a modern like a a more recent freemasonry lodge Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it literally looks like a garage you know like it's they're the most plain looking buildings and you're like okay so if these people were responsible for all this great architecture and they obviously they seem like they do a pretty good job of like maintaining the information they have okay so what happened then I think that these people have hidden information from us, and I think they take credit for everything that's ever been good. 
but I don't think they did hardly anything except for lie about it all. It's funny you should mention, um, you, you mentioned time then at the beginning, like, um, and I, I do think something we, we, that people always say, why would they do this? Because humans, the, the, they, they don't have time to wait. They mm -hmm. want it here mm -hmm. and now. Mm -hmm. But if it's something else that is immortal or has a lifespan a lot longer than us, maybe it, maybe only it has its time. And it does play the long game. And that's why these things are taking so long to happen. Because we mm -hmm. always think in in, in uh, human terms rather than demon terms. One hundred percent, yeah. So, so what it says in the book of Revelation after the devil is released, people ask, okay, so how long is the short season? It doesn't say. It just says that the Satan deceives the nations again, and then he gathers them for a battle. And I think a lot of people, again, if you read your Bible, you'd have to ask the question, like, how would he ever deceive anybody? How would he deceive people after a glorious time? You know, a lot of people believe that Jesus was, was going to be physically reigning from Jerusalem during the millennial reign. I don't believe that's the case. I believe he was reigning from a heavenly city, New Jerusalem, which I guess I would say heaven is, is, is a spiritual place, but it's also physical in the kind of way that Jesus was resurrected. He could, he could eat. But he could go through walls. He could change his appearance when he wanted to. I think the city's likely like that. That being said, so how would the devil deceive people? Well, it probably would be very difficult to deceive the people right away. So maybe he would have to play the long game. And, you know, think a couple of generations removed from some of this stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, like, people forget. I mean, obviously, yeah, people are self-focused. They forget. And to me, that makes sense. And what's interesting we got to talk about the mud flood. And so, <laughs> yes. So a lot of things that, that goes like peanut butter and jelly go together, Tartaria and the mud flood, because like, mm -hmm. so what is the mud flood? That's one of the craziest things. And I think that I've gotten in trouble for actually talking about this on Instagram and Facebook. They actually literally fact check my video. So I made a, a post about the mud flood. And if you guys aren't familiar with that is there's evidence around the whole world. And when I say the whole world, I mean, 100% of the world, there's evidence that things are buried everywhere. And really without any real explanation, mainstream. Actually, the last podcast I was on, somebody mentioned that Charles Darwin tried to theorize that why the Roman stuff was buried and Rome's were buried because of, because of earthworms. <laughs> Worms basically <laughs> made tunnels and stuff started to sink. With giant ones. <laughs> that's, that's what I said. I said, have you seen the movie Tremors? I said, that sounds, <laughs> we're talking about Tremors. I, okay, I'm, I could be on board, but little worms. No, I don't, I don't see that. But point being is the Roman ruins. It's funny. Even like today, I still, I still send my buddies articles about them digging up, accidentally discovering Roman stuff that's under the ground, mm. like Roman roads. Every time it's a bathhouse, typically they find a bathhouse under the ground. Um, a lot of these biblical cities from like the book of revelation when they had when they were digging these places up in the 1800s they were completely buried buried burned you know columns and crazy stuff like the moai statues in easter island you know it wasn't until recently they said hey guess what they have bodies they're not just heads they have bodies and some of these bodies go down like 20 feet into the ground iraq there was a once famous gate in the 1850s and um it was like 25 feet tall it, in 1850, it was like 100% under the ground. You have uh, other ancient sites like Gobekli Tepe, mm -hmm. this massive temple complex. I mean, they said they've only dug up about 5% of it. It's 100% buried. And the mainstream tries to tell us that they buried their own temple. I don't buy that for one second. It makes no sense. Like, how would you even go about doing that? These things are like 15 to 20 feet tall megaliths. Like, mm -hmm. if somebody told you to go bury something... It, it's very likely that you could with enough time, but what you would end up with is a mound. You'd <laughs> have like a pyramid or something. You wouldn't have flat level ground. And that's what you have there. And so like, that's what you have all over the whole world. And where it gets really crazy is when you start to look into modern cities and there's evidence where there's lots of places where it looks like they kind of got these partial looking basements. It's like they're basements, but they're really not. What you have is a lot of first floors that look like they've been buried up to almost like to the windows or sometimes just above the windows. 
but like or there or you have windows that are literally at ground level and then I've you go into that. yeah mm -hmm. there, well there there it is it's one of those instances where you again if when you go into an old city you will see this stuff you'll see like troughs built out around windows because the windows go into the ground and or sometimes they brick the windows up sometimes you have windows like we have a a place it's kind of like has is has a little bit of hills you'll have a building like this and then the road goes up like this and the windows start to disappear mm. as the road goes up like there's bigger windows you know here and then the road starts to cover them and it's it it looks like to me that they just the ground at some point came up and then they just decided just to pave straight over it I think what it sounds like is there was there was some kind of a, a cataclysm and the real question is when or or one of the questions is when the earliest pictures we see of kind of like these big cities for are from like the 1850s and there's mud everywhere uh there's barely any people around and there's the the most amazing buildings you've ever seen except for it's, it's they're very eerie pictures so a lot of people are theorizing that the mud flood could have been like in the 18, 18th century, maybe early 19th century. Not really sure. But it looks like there was some kind of a, a, a almost an apocalypse. There was a lot less people then. And then all of a sudden after that, like the people who did survive or the the next generation were taught a history or they weren't taught about what happened. Mm hmm yeah it's it, again it's another one of those things where as soon as you put some like common sense into things regardless of whether common sense goes in the face of what you would consider consider general like general fact is you know, we, you see quite a lot of, like with um like you say 18th century sort of townhouses and st stuff where you will have a basement level with eight foot windows the top of those windows are um are above ground the rest go into what looks like a storm drain which is where, where you've usually got a um a staircase that's been built up to it to go into, onto the main mm -hmm. level <laughs> and i have i've always thought that so you're telling me that the this what's already a four to five story like um victorian townhouse type thing um instead of just having that at that height or adding a floor on top of that they've decided to have a virtually useless you know at night time level to the house where they've they they put windows and cut out downstairs just so you could get a sl like a small bit of light in during the day it doesn't make sense that like it just our te our architecturally doesn't make sense to me one of the things that's going on now that definitely, I think, leads credence to a mud flood is, I mean, look at what's going on in Tennessee, North and South Carolina, right? And one day, one weekend, you have yeah. entire towns that are gone with five feet of mm. silt and gravel on top, and you would never know anything was there. Only the sturdiest structures would have made it, like the ones we're left with, these giant stone slab buildings mm. that are just unbelievably well built with, you know, three feet thick walls and just massive, massive cornerstones built in. Of course, it would make it through something like that. And then we would just repurpose it and never say anything. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I heard you mentioned, uh, JC, that this so, sometimes these things probably happen uh, not all at once. Like you'd expect like the uh, a Noah situation where the entire world just gets covered with water. But what possibly happens is that whoever's doing it got god doing this he does it in bits i heard you mention that on the show what did you do, do, do you believe that's what goes on he might have froze up on us oh he, he is lost he frozen yeah hmm. we'll, we'll hopefully he can it. he can still hear us so he could drop out and come back yeah it's it's an interesting concept the mud flood um the way it does the architecture and the buildings that would be left would be kind of the ones you would expect to make it through a flood, right? Mm. Massive there's stone in, structure. There's an interest in town uh, where I come from that now that the more I look into this, like architecturally, the uh, where where buildings are built, like on on such steep hills and things things like that, um, it doesn't make sense. 
and I I, I often wonder now when I, when I'm there because like like literally, I'm I'm there virtually every day, given how small uh, small where I am is. Um, I can't help think about what might be underneath. You know what? Like what? It's, right, the the buildings are on like street level now, but what's twenty foot below below street level? See, I'm I'm now just interested in what he was about to say that that you before know before the Illuminati that, that, that got to him, took him out. The Illuminati got to him. Well, while he is rebooting to come back, we can listen to him here because that is the power of technology. There you go. It seemed to be some kind of a massive cover up of something. The earliest pictures we have of like these big cities are like from the 1850s. And they're these massive cities, and, and they look very similar than they do today, actually, except for more grand looking, massive buildings. And there's like hardly any people out on the streets, like nobody. And sometimes, it, in many cases, it looks like muddy streets. And it's like, okay, so where are all the people at? It's very odd to have a giant city like that with no people. And then when you when you start, just to- so just pause this for a second. You see, if you, if you go back to that photograph there, just before, just the, like the last last one, there was so. Something that that point jumped out to me with these things. Do you know? In some cases, I I don't know now because now I'm I'm looking at them as photographs, but I'm almost convinced that years ago I would have just seen that, and it wouldn't have even crossed my mind that was a photograph, and the difficulty of taking a photograph of somewhere like that with no people in it. Yeah. Something so grand should be more full. Yeah. Like that with no people. And then when you, when you start to see people later in like, sometimes you have these early videos of like these cities like Paris and London and all the people are dressed really nice, like dressed to the nines, like aristocrat looking people. And then you're like that. There's just something so off about this. Like I, I can't really kind of put my, my finger on it but something's really off and then you start to see the orphan train thing and you're like okay so wait a minute these things have to be related and that's why i started to make the connections like wait a minute the people who are dressed like that were not working in factories right (laughs) they weren't working in fields they weren't working in factories these people look very rich so maybe pictures with nobody in them in these big cities maybe the the orphan trains were related to the fact that they needed people to go work in the factories and then if you go look in more old pictures, kids working in factories, kids working in fields, kids doing all these random jobs. And then you see the insane asylums. Okay, so between like 1860 and 1929 in America, there's 250,000 kids on orphan trains. Again, the population is much bigger now. That number is huge now. It's way bigger then. And then there was 150,000 people in the same asylums. Okay, so the math actually makes sense. Like, that were these the parents of these kids? And then the kids get shipped all around the world, all around the country, at least here. And I know it was a worldwide thing. And then you see like the things. So there's there's like zero insane asylums now. There was like 1,500 of them in like 1,900. There was like there's like. Zero. And the man is back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. It was like this. I got pretty good internet here, and it just yeah, it just went straight out. I don't know. What... It's the Illuminati man. It's the Illuminati. We're getting too we're getting too close. <laughs> so we got to we got to keep digging in. So, it, it, we're watching your video that ties a lot of these things, like the orphan trains, and something Lee had pointed out. When you look at these pictures of these grand old cities and massive buildings, there's nobody in the street Mm-mm. for such a huge building for such a huge town. There's no nobody's out. And you know, and you know what all the normies always say: exposure. They scream exposure. They say that back in those days, it would have took forever to to take a picture. So, therefore. There would there'd be nobody in the pictures because they'd be moving and they wouldn't be in the pictures. But first of all, that's I think they talk about really long exposure times when they first invented a camera. Mm-hmm. You know, it took like hours to take a picture. Okay, so these are like pictures from the 1850s, sometimes in the 1870s. There would have been blurs in the pictures. And also there's no like there's no carts and wagons and horses just standing mm-hmm. around either. So like there's nothing in those pictures. They're obviously very eerie. And again, there's mud on the street. Like the streets are covered in mud. Mm. They didn't have muddy. Well, they didn't have they didn't have muddy streets in buildings like that. It's not like streets weren't weren't invented until recently. They like they had the Romans built roads. So there's there's just something very eerie about those pictures. There's a real crazy one of um 
think it's San Francisco in the 1870s. And so San Francisco, we're told, had about a thousand people in like 1848. And so by the 1870s, San Francisco looks like it did today, like it does today. And they have this giant panorama view of it. And again, there's nobody in the pictures. And you're kind of thinking like this would have been, I mean, to think possibly that they went from a thousand people to a massive city like we know today in 30 years, less than 30 years, obviously is incredible on its, on its face. But if, but if that was true, for one, there'd be construction like everywhere. They'd be building mm -hmm. stuff constantly. There'd be people everywhere. Obviously that place would have been so busy, but, but yet the pictures are just like, yeah, that's where people start to speculate. Like the term founded does founded, like literally mean found. I think it could mean, I think it could be, I think a lot of these places were probably buried. There's crazy pictures. I think of Kansas city. Have you ever seen those ones? I'm not sure about that. You uh, feel free to bring, bring some up if you've got it. Yeah. There's, uh, there's these pictures from Kansas city and there's just mud everywhere. Let me see if I can find that. I, I did, I do put some of these on, um, let me see. I'll try to find my, uh, I have, so San Francisco back then, there's a bunch of naked people wearing strange outfits and needles all over the ground. <laughs> I think it was better than it was today. That's for sure. I think I don't think I don't even think we had to have to do. I mean, I think even if it was still covered in mud, it would be better than today. Yeah, last time I was there, I thoroughly regretted the trip. <laughs> that's that's such a shame because I mean that is one of like the as far as architecture and just like landscape and geography, it's like got to be one of the most awesome places. It, I mean, it, it was just, it was a beautiful city. It was a beautiful city. Let me see. Uh, it is like London. It has a lot of human poop on the ground now. I mean, yeah, that's just such a travesty. Let me see. Yeah, uh, it's it's interesting. The interesting thing that's out there. I mean, my town has right. one of those old buildings. It has a uh, our library. It's okay, here you go. I think, I, think I got it. So I can share on here. Okay. Uh, I think someone will have to approve it. There we go. You guys seeing that? So that's Kansas City. So look at all that mud and dirt all the way up to the sides of those buildings. And so this is like in the 18, you know, the 1800s, you know, so this would have been this when this place is new. Mm -hmm. You know, they would not have built a building next to that. <laughs> you would have cleared the dirt away. I mean, it kind of looks like that maybe these cities were dug out and it was like mm. that then some yeah. of these buildings were later repurposed for other functions. So they were founded in blah, blah, blah. Or like when you see like some of the kind of really fishy construction dates on some of these buildings, is it possible that the construction was literally just the renovation or like the cleaning up process to make these these buildings functional again? we you simply couldn't have had you you couldn't have had a building like that with soil bankments next to it you know it's it's the whole inside of the building would have just been black mold and damp within like the first winter mm -hmm. yeah I good mean, call it's funny because we were just like the wife and i were just replacing part of the fence we had and i was mentioning her how you can't oh here's a picture of that when i was talking about with the windows but yeah mm -hmm. the uh we were talking about how like you can't, you know, you don't put your pickets all the way to the ground because if you mm -hmm. do, then obviously the wet ground will cause the water to seep up into the wood and then the mm -hmm. wood will start to rot. So, I mean, obviously stone's not that same way, but at the same time, like you, you wouldn't want that being right next to this because like, cause brick is porous. It would hold it, water. Yeah. It would yeah. hold, it would hold water and stuff would be ruined eventually. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you can see on this picture, you can see where the the street level goes up and you see, yeah, like where the, the windows start to disappear. You know they didn't build windows like that, like a no, little bit of window and then like a lot more window. And you it often see no like sense. on these brownstones, you have like good examples of it where I'm sure like where you guys are, especially in in the UK, where there's always stairs leading up to the front door. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like likely that that was the second level, and that became the first floor. 
it it makes no sense the whole stairs leading up to the door as well if you think because people get old you know stairs start to become a struggle at some point yes. do you ever get i mean i mean what do the debunkers say about this when do they say that they use these mounds as scaffolding or something because i mean this is insane yeah like here's a good picture of these this one from like i think this might be in seattle wow I've well, they most of the time they just say no. <laughs> they don't really, <laughs> you know. Well, I think that's the the one thing I always try to like. I I always just question people about. It. I said they don't even try to explain this. They really do. Just they kind of just say no, or they just shrug it off as a a wild conspiracy theory. Like I said, I, those videos that I, you probably posted. I know I got in trouble for one of them, just talking about the mud flood, and they're saying there's the big lead, one of these fact checking sites, they say there's no evidence of it. And I was like, there's lots of evidence of it. I just showed you the whole video has got evidence of all of it. And so again, if Charles Darwin says his best guess is that earthworms did it. I mean, <laughs> I would say that, let's just say, I don't buy that. I think that's the, one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. So what, so what did this? And so that's the thing. It's like, I, I started to learn this recently that, when I started to try to build cases for things that I believe based on history, we have like, we have like ancient history, we have like biblical history. And then we have like lots of blank spots in the middle between like, it's almost like our history started right around the time, maybe Columbus 1492. And even that mm -hmm. stuff is like between there. Like, so we have when the Europeans came over to North America and South America and we have like, obviously from Americans perspective, it's like, mostly we hear about 1776 and we hear onward after that. But when you go to try to find stuff in between like 1776 in like the times of Jesus, there is so many blank spots in our history. And so that, I think to me, it's just like the, they don't really have good, they're, they're, I mean, history really is like that whole phrase of history is a set of lies agreed upon. You know, history is written by the winners. And it seems to me like that, as I said, you have these robber barons, you have these people in secret societies who have taken credit for basically everything. And those are the people who you basically are credited with, like the modern medical industry, the modern school system. And we're taught certain things. And I think that probably for like, you know, like we were saying that this is a world changing thing to, to see stuff like this and they would rather just not even not even know. So it's it's just much easier just to say, you know, you're wearing a tinfoil hat for asking questions about this. Mm. You know, the funny part is when people like I know you you brought up um, Lee the the whited out skies and stuff like that. You know, that's what people call call vanilla skies. Yeah. And so sometimes mm -hmm. there's construction pictures, but they're really not showing much construction. They're showing like scaffolding at um, like on buildings that are almost basically completed looks like and, repair work yeah yes yeah it, it looks repair like work or demolition that they, they, i've seen lots of pictures now which are supposedly um which are supposedly things getting built that when you when you actually look at them it looks more like they would be demolished or destroyed rather than being built the the um the world's fairs are a perfect example of that yeah, I got some of those pictures. If you want me to, I can pull those up. The world, the world fair stuff. I think that's that's where, when, if you guys have never, you know, if people listening have never seen that. I think that was one of those things. It's it, it's shocking when you see, um, like Chicago, and um, oh shoot, I guess I don't have as many pictures of these things as I thought. JT, I don't know if you thought this, but you you probably have thought this. When, what year would they have been pulling this uh, dirt away from these buildings to reveal them? Um, I guess that's what I'm saying. I think that, like, based on the stuff that I've kind of looked into, I've, I've, I think it had to have been probably around sometime in the 1800s. I mean, when, some, was, maybe when the, were dinosaurs discovered? Well, that's what that, I think that's the funny part is that I put this together. I don't know how many other people have talked about this. I know a lot of people in my community just say the dinosaurs are fake. I'm kind of like lean that dinosaurs are don't give it a, don't get don't get it twisted i believe that there's monstrous creatures that were buried and became fossilized at some point i think the story of the dinosaurs is made up like it we're we're called we're told like for one that they lived millions of years ago 
for two, they obviously evolved out of something, be something before, and then they all died, and then we found their bones later. It's really just a story because what, what, what dinosaurs come from, like a word that means monstrous lizard. Yeah. Well, now Ter they say, yeah, terrible now, lizard. Well, now they say that they're birds. So, okay. So, like the, the word, the name is kind of nonsensical. And then supposedly they found soft, soft tissue in Tyrannosaurus rex bones, like recently. So, that would lead you to believe that they're really not that old either. Mm -hmm. So, I started to wonder have you ever heard that they found fossilized cowboy boots? You ever heard that? I've heard of the wagon wheel, the tools, part of a railroad that was found in a coal mine, toys in a coal mine. Yeah. I haven't heard of the cowboy boots, but I have heard of like um, modern S tools, like things that look like drills in a coal Inc scene. Inc yeah. So it's, so it's interesting to think that yeah. if you had a, some kind of an event that literally everything was encased in mud at a certain time, is that as could that have produced fossils of all kinds of things? Mm -hmm. And the answer is obviously yes. It is funny when you think about it. Like, so you know, this is not a conspiracy. We know that man has been digging in the dirt basically forever. And this mm -hmm. is this is that famous picture of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Insane. It's, um it's just a, a temporary structure. I don't know what you're talking about. It's just <laughs> it was just a place that people could just go and, and look at the big gold statue. It's, big basic, lake. it's basically paper mache, man. And the sport. electric light. You know what? So uh <laughs> yeah, yeah, to finish the thought on the dinosaurs though, but I think it's interesting that they didn't the band has been digging in the ground forever, right? As long as man, there's been a man, he's been digging in the ground. So the idea they they didn't start finding dinosaur bones until the 1800s is it's not realistic. They had have found them. They obviously would have called them something else if they didn't believe in dinosaurs. They'd have called them dragons. They'd have called them whatever. Maybe they really didn't care about old dead bones back in those days. Point being is maybe they were fossilized after a certain time. Maybe like even like was Marco Polo wrote about dragons. Yeah, you know. So like one man's dragon is another man's dinosaur. It's the point being is like, or maybe they were giant bones. Maybe they were giant humans. Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm. I'm just wondering there. Like, with if they were taking these all this mud off these buildings in the the 1800s, mm -hmm. did they find these <laughs> dragon bones? Uh, then? Possi possibly. I mean, it makes more sense that if man wrote about these things, but of course, in the way we're taught in history. No, these were before us. So, mm -hmm. like, so what man wrote about would be irrelevant, even though they wrote about monstrous lizards. They called them dragons, mm. and so again, but they also talked about monstrous people, and they were nephilim. They were giants. They were, you know, cyclopses. They were whatever, whatever weird thing you could think of. But a lot of times, when they, when you think like the way we taught in, as kids, well, you go into a museum and you see a Tyrannosaurus Rex, you're like, wow. That's cool. So they dug that up in Montana. Oh, they, oh did they? Mm -hmm. Well, you actually learn, no, that's those bones are actually not real on that statue. And supposedly they only dug up part of a skeleton and then they decided to use their own imaginations and things to create the rest of it to give you it's it's theater. It's 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 made up. It's it's science fiction is what it is. It's it's the missing link Lucy they found in Africa they found from two bones and they recreate an entire skeleton history backstory and have endless funding. It's, it's like P, it's like PT Barnum stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and meanwhile like I don't know if you're aware of this are you aware of the uh, Egyptian temple that was found in Tennessee? Um no, but that's interesting cuz you like they did have that they would have the biggest do they have the 10th largest pyramid in the whole world is is the Bass Pro Shop in uh, Yes. You know, we also have the Parthenon Allegedly, that, a recreation of the Parthenon, which is over a massive cave system in Nashville. Oh, that's over a cave system. It's okay, over, it's over something that goes down. Well, we should probably talk about this. Like, well, let's talk about the Columbia Expedition. We'll get. We'll move on to. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it the? Was it this? Was it the centennial celebration in in uh, Tennessee that they yeah. had all this? Yeah, let's talk about that next. But so, yeah, as you see this picture of of the Columbia Expedition in. This was in 1893 in Chicago. And obviously, this is only a small picture of it. And obviously, you see the water, the fountains, they have bridges. I and mean, this is like this place is it's really unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And like and when I say unbelievable, so 
literally somebody showed me some of these pictures of this and it was a different one. They actually had one in Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. And what, what the fact check said under the thing, it literally said, like you said, it was plaster of Paris and it's like plaster yeah. of Paris can't get wet. Mm. It's like cloth and like, I, th this is the funny thing is, so I have a construction background. My family's owned a construction, a commercial construction company basically before I was even born. So I've been, I've worked in the field. I've worked in the office the last 20 plus years. We actually do metal framing, plastering, drywall, all that kind of stuff. So when somebody told, told me that it was just plaster and wood and whatever else, and you're like, okay, so when I first started make, doing plaster stuff, s plaster was, have a, has a cement base. Mm -hmm. So if they made some of this stuff out of plaster, they would, it would have still been really, really heavy. And obviously the detail that you're seeing in these pictures, there's nothing easy about any of that stuff. And then when you kind of see like the scale of it, actually, when you see picture people of picture, you know, people in the pictures, these buildings are massive. They are absolutely huge. Maybe, Didn't like, the World's you, Fair in Chicago's great building hold 150,000 people? I believe. Well, I, th I learned I thought, this. I thought it was something crazy like that. Well, I, I learned this. So in 1876, Philadelphia had a, it, I guess they called it the centennial celebration. So it was one year or 100 years of America. Mm -hmm. And they built the biggest building in the whole world. Of course, again, they, they're saying these temporary structures. I think they said it was 20 acres big in the inside. Well, so in 1893, Chicago built the biggest building in the whole world. And I think they said it was 44 acres what? inside. So, yeah, so they went from, so in Philadelphia, they built the biggest building in the whole world and they destroyed it afterwards sometime. <laughs> and then, mm -hmm. and then Chicago built one twice as big and they destroyed that one too. Okay, so when you see some of these buildings and sometimes they do show in insides of them, I'm sure, if, I'm not sure if I got any mm -hmm. pictures of the interiors, but they look kind of like hangers. I mean, mm -hmm. so the, the one thing is everyone always says, oh, they're made of wood and plaster and this. Well, if you see, if you ever see anything from the insides of them, yeah, they look like hangers. So they look like, actually look like they got metal, metal supports mm -hmm. and you, you need steel to support all this weight. I mean, these things are so big. Like I said, it, it, it defies all reason and logic that you could build stuff, stuff that was this big and then not have it like being supported by anything that it wouldn't just fall down. So the idea that they were temporary to me, it's funny. It's like, it's kind of like, well, you could say it was temporary if you destroyed it afterwards, but it's, it wasn't built to be temporary. I said, what do you think things are, are built of now? Yeah. Wood. I mean, they build wood skyscrapers now, like literally. So they could build a wood skyscraper. They could put plaster on the outside of it and there would be nothing temporary about it. Mm -hmm. It would be as permanent as you want it to be. I mean, at least it would, it would last as long as us, mm -hmm. but supposedly they destroyed all this stuff. So, so when people just say it was just wood, it was just plaster, they don't know what they're talking about. They probably ne never swung a hammer in their life. You couldn't do this kind of stuff to just be temporary. Cause like I said, again, it would have to have like, look at, look at this, look at this picture right here where the bridge is temporary too. We're like, the, we're like the canals they built out. I mean, all the yeah. infrastructure, you know, so we're taught is like these, these world fairs had 200 buildings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so we're in like, obviously if you see, if you look at one of them, ain't none of them the same that none of them looks temporary, you know, I've heard the argument. They say, well, oh, the world fairs were very similar to the way that we do the Olympics now. So if like Paris gets the Olympics or Russia gets it or Tokyo, they would build infrastructure to support like an Olympic village and the events mm. and blah, blah, blah. But it's yeah, the but 18th here, century. <laughs> no, but, here's, but here's also the thing. So if you go to those places, like a good example of this is like in America, when I was a senior in high school, we went, we had the senior trip. We went to, to Lake Placid. So in 1980, they, they hosted the Winter Olympics. And when we went there, guess what? We saw all the old things they built for there because in Lake Placid really doesn't have much going else going on there. So they left all that stuff there because, hello, we don't build things just to destroy them. Mm -hmm. You know, so if they would have built these things for this fair and obviously they could support 
all the weight that they do, you had, again, you were talking about 100,000 people being in a place, yeah. 150,000 people. I believe it because they claim that millions of people went to these fairs yes. over like the course of like six months. So if you had all that and you built all that, why would you ever built it to be just temporary? Because obviously, for one, it looks totally legit and awesome. You know, the, the idea that you would just destroy that afterwards in a time that would have been what we're basically taught is that mm -hmm. the common people would have been trying to worry about the bare necessities. Yes. They, they would be building this on their spare time and then when they're doing their day jobs and they would go back to their their wood shanties and the rest time and like try to just stay warm. Meanwhile, also, it was, but doesn't even get talked about as much as the fact that electricity was basically brand new. And I think all these places, all these world fairs were lit up. Yes. Mm -hmm. They had moving right. walkways as well, like escalator systems throughout. Yeah. So these, so you, so what we're taught is like, I remember watching one of these shows about like Thomas Edison and Tesla and they had their little rivalry and, mm -hmm. you know, Westinghouse. And they were saying that the, Tesla and some other people went and wired all the stuff for that, that Columbia exhibition. So, so as we were kind of panning around the pictures of those things, you're seeing how big this place is. And we're told that a couple guys just went and wired that whole thing up. Okay. And so like ba basically electricity is brand new then. And so all these places are all legit lit up at night. It's a lot of copper wire for an industry that doesn't exist yet. It's a, it's a lot of everything. It's a lot, a lot of, of light everything. bulbs. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, the, the amount of light bulb. Yeah, you, you, again, this is this is time before all these things are mass produced. Yes, but yet they did these things. I mean, it doesn't seem like it doesn't it doesn't make sense for us to do that now when we're told we're more advanced than they were. So if it doesn't make sense now, why would it ever made sense ever? I mean, it makes perfect sense to me. What's not to make sense? Some paper mache, fill it with water, <laughs> and then stick some brand new electric technology around it. Yeah, exactly. Your uncle. Yeah, like look at the fountains and stuff. It's just like you can't like there's there's. It, I don't know. It's 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 crazy to me that people think that that this could have been done quickly and easily at any point. I think the style is also interesting because like later world's fairs, like they had one in Knoxville, Tennessee, and they tried to make it there. And it was 84, I believe 82 or 84. And it was like the future version of what the world would look like. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, gold plated glass dome, sun sphere and poop on the streets, poop on the streets, <laughs> um, you know, sci-fi look to it. Whereas mm -hmm. you look at these world's fairs for all the technology and innovation was there. It has a very old world aesthetic. Mm hmm these two things were always together. It's strange to me. It's strange to me that, I don't know, because even in that time, they weren't building things like that. You're right. They were in wood shanties. Right. Well, I mean, again, you would think that like the, there would be some kind of symmetry between the places they lived and the things that were the places they worked, yeah. like kind of like there is now. Yeah. Um, yes. But there's not. So like there's this disconnect. So you have these master craftsmen who live in squalor. So yes. like why is like so why is why was that ever the case? It just, it, it really it just it defies all logic that that they could do those kind of things in a time that's more primitive. And so we're told and they could do them fast, like super fast. And if you if you're me and I like things that make sense, what makes sense if we're more advanced than them, they we would be able to do the same things they did, except we'd be able to do it faster and cheaper because we have better tools. But we don't we don't do anything close to that. And and there's not even an acknowledgement that those buildings are better than the ones we do now. Even though yeah. again, I'm in the construction industry and it's like the things we do now is like everything is getting cheaper and thinner and and uglier. Mm -hmm. Almost everything yeah. we do, it's funny, even like so we do um again, I said metal framing. So like a lot of studs, they're you know, like the thickness of the metal is measured in gauges. And so this is just since I've been working there. So like, you know, you was like a 25 gauge stud, a 20 gauge stud. So now they have to specify they want 33 mil 20 gauge because the, the normal 20 gauge now is way thinner than, than 20 gauge. 
So it's like it's so they made it like they put dimples in the studs. They do things to make it supposedly just as strong, but they they try to cut corners. So everything becomes a cheaper imitation of what it used to be. And it's like that whole old phrase of they don't build them like they used to. Mm -hmm. The things they used to build lasted for a long time. That's why it's funny. Like the it's interesting that guy uh, with Frank Fritz just died from American Pickers. Yeah. And I watched that. I used to watch that show. And it was like, it was kind of interesting when they were going around just getting junk all around the American, you know, countryside. And, but they could clean stuff up and it would look really nice. You couldn't do that now because the things mm -hmm. that would break now, it would just be, they would literally just be fit for land, uh, landfills. Yeah. But obviously back then they built steel things to last and they did last. And, and now they build garbage. I mean, so yeah, so to me, it, it all kind of, it is evidence that there was a peak of civilization and we're on the downside of it. And I want to go back to what you were talking about. So the, the, was it the centennial celebration of Tennessee or, mm -hmm. or Nashville? Yeah. And they built, and this is, like I said, again, this is funny. So in Chicago, they say that all those buildings were temporary, except for there was one, I think it might be like the arts building is actually still there. They turned it into a museum. So it was like, so they weren't all temporary because this one was actually made of stone. One of the ones that was not destroyed. Mm -hmm. And so we're told, I think in that, uh, that centennial celebration in Tennessee, they built like a pyramid. They built a Parthenon. Mm -hmm. And supposedly the Parthenon was temporary. They destroyed it, but they liked it so much. They built a real one that was made of stone. Yeah. What? It's, like, it's, it's huge. Yeah, it's, it's like huge. it's like I think it's they say it's like the same size as the one, yes. the original Greek one, right? Or the was yeah. it yeah, Greek one. Yes. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing that it's there because again, before we go that I think you're uh, all you'll have to approve it if you're trying to share. Um the Egyptian temples they found in Tennessee uh were when the TVA was putting in its dam and water control system and they covered it in concrete. They built the dam on top of it. And there were scholars from like Oxford. They were like, this is Egyptian. This is an Egyptian temple. This is the temple of whatever Egyptian God. This is all laid out. And they're like, great, great story, boss. We need you to get out of the hole. We're going to pour 70 tons of concrete today. Wait a minute. So what, you were saying they found, they found a pyramid. Yeah. See, I've uh, never, they, I've never heard that, but you know, what's interesting. I think it's interesting in light of what's happening in North Carolina and like East Tennessee, that, you know, it's likely some of these things happen because of a broken dam. Okay, let's let's see that. You want to play that? In the 1930s, when archaeologists found an Egyptian temple buried in eastern Tennessee, that's okay. Not a lot of people do. In the 1930s, archaeologists uncovered an Egyptian temple buried in eastern Tennessee near Norris Dam. During the construction of the dam, the Tennessee Valley Authority discovered native mounds and began excavating the area leading to the remarkable find of a large platform resembling a temple. Over 400 workers were involved in the excavation, unearthing multiple skeletons and unique relics, including a pigment box containing a shade of purple previously unknown in North America. Scholar James Randall Harris proposed that the temple was originally built by pharaonic Egyptian emigrants to honor the deities Isis and Osiris. Interestingly, Cherokee legends also mention a priesthood known as the Ani Kutani, who claimed to possess celestial knowledge and were associated with the phrase, I am from above. Chief Charles Hicks wrote about the Cherokee's encounter with mound builders, suggesting a connection to the temple's discovery in eastern Tennessee. Today, the temple lies submerged beneath a lake, leaving behind a fascinating historical mystery. Interesting. You know, so it's interesting. So they were talking about building a dam. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of this is, you know, attributed to like a broken dam and like broken infrastructure that caused all this flooding in North Carolina. I didn't know this till recently. There's like 91,000 dams in the world. Mm -hmm. Over 90,000 of them are in America. Yes. I, you guys can look that up. I, I had to, I, I heard that and I looked it up and I was like, what in the world? And so if you think about it, like obviously all the, all the man-made lakes and the things that are created during that, like what could be covered 
by all that water? Obviously, the answer is lots of stuff. Like what couldn't be covered by all that stuff? I mean, I, I learned some of this stuff when I was doing videos about the Hoover Dam. And so when they created the Hoover Dam, we're told if, if we did this, it submerged this city, this ancient city by the Anasazi Native Americans or Indians or whatever, whatever you, however you would phrase it. Anasazi actually just means ancient ones. So we really don't know who they were, but they supposedly lived here like a thousand years ago. And so when you think of like Native Americans, you might have a like an idea in your head what this city might have looked like. But if you go to the lakemead.gov site, they actually talk about how substantial this place was. They said there was buildings with up to 100 rooms in them. And I was like, wait a minute. That sounds like a real city then. It wasn't just like a it wasn't just mud huts. Mm -hmm. It was like legit something. So point being is like, yeah, it, with 90,000 dams in America, like, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that's likely hidden. And interesting, too, when you they were talking about that, the base of that temple. Well, like in the Missouri, in Missouri, there's like tons of mounds. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in Ohio, there's the Serpent Mound. And when you actually see, like, go around the world, like, like in Mexico, what those pyramids look like before they were excavated. Mounds. You see those old pictures of those pyramids. They were they were they look like mounds. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of mound there's lots of mounds around the world, but I think that they're covering megaliths. I, I think you I think you're right to that. Uh it's interesting. So the the Tennessee thing, you can actually find that in textbooks that have since been out of print and are unbelievably expensive online. Like the findings and pictures. Usually when people put up the pictures of it digitally, they get removed pretty quick. It's it's very strange strange thing happening the um museum of tarot guy he's in nashville he has a copy and he's probably the most active one informing people of things like that but i agree with the mounds we have a lot of mounds in tennessee and mississippi you know alabama georgia and they're usually just roped off the state in tennessee the tens the pinson state mounds um it's a if they were pyramids they're an interesting structure out there in this swampy area and basically they're just kind of roped off from the world just like huge swaths of the Grand Canyon that are blocked to us to be able to go to. There's and tons many of other places. places. Yeah, tons of places. Na national parks, there's lots of places you can't go to. Yeah, obviously everyone mentions the Grand Canyon, which is obviously a great example that you have rock formations that look like temples, and they're called temples. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they look like they were ancient temples, and they just so happen to be called the Temple of Isis, the Te Temple of Shiva, the, the Tower of Osiris, like the Temple of Ra and all this stuff, Temple of Solomon all this stuff and they all look i mean when you go to the grand canyon if you've ever been it the mm -hmm. idea that the colorado river did that is preposterous it's yeah. it makes no sense it's it's it literally is awe inspiring you like it takes your breath away when you look over the edge and it just i think there's two theories that work either that was like a a once a great city that was down there and it was destroyed by some kind of cataclysm or some people have said what if it was like a rock quarry now that both those, I mean, I've, both these things sound absolutely insane, but, but yeah, there's people have found, I mean, there's articles, I think from the Arizona Gazette saying that they found Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon. I hit yes. that. Smithsonian went out there. They, they had articles as well. Yeah. And then so, they said, no, -uh, we didn't find, we didn't find nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, you're not allowed to go back where we, you're not allowed to go there anymore. So yeah. Correct. So 90% of the Grand Canyon, at least is off limits to the public. That is correct. What's the reason for that? Like the official reason? I don't. I don't know that they ever give one. I mean, Did I think they... some people, like some people, like the normies, might say, "Oh, well, it's dangerous." But I mean, like, there's people die in, in national parks in America every All day, time. every day, every day. They quote safety uh, because when you go and visit it, there's only a small portion of it that actually has like a wall around it, and people do fall over taking selfies and stuff. But at that mm. selection, people that happens everywhere. Mm. I, a huge chunk of it is on a native reservation, but even the federal government keeps the natives off. Like the American Indians, you're not allowed. You know, the First Nation people, oh, yeah, yeah, this is yours. Yeah, but you can't set up hotels here. You can't set up, like, you. no, no one's allowed down there. No one's allowed to go around it. But you said it's ours. Yeah, sure, it is. Absolutely. You just can't go there. Uh, it's They don't, they don't explain because they don't have to. The federal government doesn't have to. Um, so JT, with everything that you've been diving, you said that you really dove into it in 2020. Um, since you weren't out there trusting the science, 
with the rest of the normies. What was the biggest thing that you stumbled across that is like radically altered your perspective? Like it doesn't even have to be something you've proven true yet, but something that haunted you and kept you up at night. Something that was just like, whoa. I think the shape of the earth thing really got me sick to my stomach. The first time I was like, after making fun of flat earthers for a long, long enough time, I started to say, I think they might be right. That was, I think that was one of the first ones, but I think, I think this probably was, I mean, obviously as a Christian guy, the idea that Jesus already came back was like something I didn't want to accept. And I think that was, I mean, if you, if you really think about it, like I said, I, I, I talked about it in that one video you're playing that I was saying, when you started to go down the rabbit hole of like the old world, I don't think that there's anything that really gets, I mean, if the conspiracies on the level we're talking about literally involves throwing people in crazy houses, carting children all around the world to do odd jobs in factories and things like that, towns destroyed on purpose, buildings destroyed on purpose. Like that is that is something we don't you wouldn't really want to believe, right? Mm -hmm. That there was this cover up of something that was better than this in order to in, in order to what? I mean, I think to me and it's like it just it makes sense. It's sickening, but that to make us all free range slaves in this, mm -hmm. in the new system that they've done, there was a reset. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people are not probably is um, you might say that I'm religious. I don't really go, I like that term, but like, if you're not, you'd probably just say, this is kind of a cyclical thing. There's resets and the elites, you know, pull the string whenever they want to. And at some point they started over again, there's evidence of resets. There's, there's lots of evidence of resets. And I think that to me, that's probably the thing that I really didn't want to believe until, like I said, I just understanding that it, it did fit with my worldview that, that again, yes, if the, the elites are worshiping the devil, then, then Jesus is real. The Bible's mm -hmm. real. All those things are true. And now I can put this in here and I still, I actually feel more comfortable believing what I do because I'm saying like, this actually makes sense that if Jesus was talking about these certain things were going to happen, if this is evidence that some of this stuff already did happen, then yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm good with it, but yeah, like, I think like a lot of conspiracies that there's some of them you just, you don't want to accept. And then you start to slowly accept it and you start to get sick. And then you're like, and eventually you kind of say, all right, I guess that's true, but now what? And then you yeah. kind of finally accept it and move on. But I think the more I've kind of researched this stuff, I, yeah, I think that that, yeah, I think the old world probably is, is, is probably the craziest one there is because yeah, even the shape of the earth, the shape of the earth is, is small compared to that because this involves obviously real people, a, a real coordinated conspiracy and like real evil, really. Yeah. All knowledge everywhere in every library, everything. Yeah. yeah. Man, that is that right there is definitely the vaccination for reality if you're normally listening to this <laughs> you just you just got your four doses in a row man <laughs> and yeah, it only took booster. an hour and a half mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's four doses plus a booster mm -hmm. um yeah uh jt it's been awesome having you on i know we would love to have you back this has been a blast so we oh, absolutely deeper on other things. we've not even gone into antarctica yet so no no, no yeah yeah it's i'm definitely down. i'm definitely down. i mean I, it's funny because like when you guys brought me on to talk about this and you're like how long do we have because i was like this this is one of those topics we've I've talked about on my podcast like probably for for at least a hundred hours you know because yeah. there because oh, yeah. there's so much that you kind of like how many directions you could go so yeah so obviously I would I would love to come back on and we could talk yeah. about go into depth in one particular area of it that'd be awesome Definitely. yeah we got we got to keep them wanting more man got to keep them wanting more there's more <laughs> yeah <laughs> so JT but just before just before we, we we end the show um where can the people find you. Well, yeah. So, you know, I go by my user tag is JT follows JC and you can find me on Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube, um, my podcast. If you want to search it on like on Spotify and Apple, you can check out Decoding Babylon. That's where I would I go for, you know, that's that's basic. If you find if you look for JT follows JC, you might find me on a few other podcasts, but Decoding Babylon's mine. But yeah, like if you want to hear more in depth about this kind of stuff, I would suggest you go to um yeah, to, to YouTube, but I'm on, I'm on, I'm on Facebook as well. And you find my link tree, you can see me on there. And I'm now I'm starting to do a little more stuff on X because I feel like that 
Mm-hmm. X is, you know, they're they're a little more lenient as far as with the things you can say, and you know, I think that maybe one day we're going to need that place. Oh, again, as I said, I'm I'm gonna I'm on Rumble too, and I'm that's where I probably put, put the more spicy stuff that would get me banned on the other app. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. good stuff, man. And with that, Lee, you roll us out. Yeah, cheers, guys. Cheers, JC. Thanks. I I look forward to having you on again. Yeah, for sure. God bless. Bye. Bye.